Normal People is a 2020 element picture show for Hulu and BBC Three. The show is based on the best-selling book of the same name by Sally Rooney. Today, I want to explore how normal people can be viewed as a portrait of 21st century romance, capturing beauty, intimacy, and brutality in its stark portrayal of turbulent and difficult teenage relationships. From its exceptional soundtrack to its effective, stylized cinematography, Normal People is a show that hits close to home for many viewers, highlighting the emotional difficulty of first relationships whilst never patronizing its audience. Before we get into things, I want to say a huge thank you to all my supporters for helping me get to 10,000 subscribers. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing and turning on notifications. Let's get into it. Welcome to the film essay. The narrative itself is very simple in a lot of ways, which in romance often works in its favour. Elements of the story can be compared to arguably the most influential love story of all time, Romeo and Juliet, the star-crossed lovers from different families and social groups who must hide their relationship from their family and friends. The simple narrative helps the show achieve new depth and meaning, as instead of the audience being fed exposition and storytelling, we are left to reflect on the choice of words Marianne or Connell use, or the meaning behind a look, intimately involving the viewer. The show effectively portrays issues with class and wealth in a way that feels far truer to life than other comparable TV shows and films. Often in romance dramas or comedies involving teenagers, the wealthy are portrayed as the popular kids, such as in Mean Girls and Sex Education. What this show does well is highlight issues with class and wealth in a much more true way, showing how wealthy Marianne has a turbulent home life and is relentlessly mocked and outcast at school. The narrative does well at not patronising the viewer, giving us highs but also serious lows, showing how difficult young relationships can be, despite their moments of euphoria. Ultimately ending with Marianne and Connell breaking up is testament to this, showing the brutality young love can contain in a way that is accessible to, whilst never patronising of, its key audience. The soundtrack is a unique blend of nostalgia-inducing tracks from the past 20 years and Irish artists to capture the sense of place and atmosphere present in the book. Music producers Maggie Phillips and Juliet Martin said in an interview with Bazaar, we didn't want things to feel like a bunch of music videos, we wanted it to feel very authentic and grounded. Part of this authenticity was through the use of artists from Ireland to stay true to the story. The initial playlist included Villagers, Soak, Saint Sister, Lisa Hannigan and more. This was drastically opposed to the use of Frank Ocean, Carly Rae Jepsen and Selena Gomez. This normalised the show, making it accessible to a wide audience of teenagers and students who found a musical landscape in the show that both reflected the music they listened to themselves, whilst also emphasising Irish artists that built an atmosphere and sense of location. The cinematography of the show feels half raw and half stylized. As cinematographer Susie Lavelle said, we will use angles where you can't quite see what's going on, and can't quite see the expression on the character's face, for instance. So you have to twist yourself to try and see and understand the drama of the thing. And sometimes there is an observational quality about it, almost like wildlife documentary filmmaking, where you just sit back and allow things to unfold. Close-ups were prevalent throughout the show, giving us an insight into the minds of Marianne and Connell. This was effectively contrasted with the use of montage when the two are apart, drastically opposing their situation or mental state to reinforce their distance and separation. A shot that I loved that was used on many occasions was the smooth behind the head shot, following the characters and showing us, as the audience, what they see, whilst obscuring their facial expression. This gave the audience a real sense of identification with the lead character, and an immersion into their world. A real triumph was the decision to split the show into 12 half an hour episodes, rather than the customary format of 6 hour long episodes. This really helped the pacing of the story, keeping things constantly in motion, whilst also being a great way to stay true to the book, with each episode feeling akin to a chapter. Another thing I found fascinating about the structure was the complete absence of subplots. After we are introduced to our two main characters, the story remains entirely focused on Marianne and Connell, giving us nowhere else to look, and as a result, making us far more involved in their love story. The sex scenes are, very deliberately, long and raw. At times, as Judith Wood says in the Daily Telegraph, it can leave the viewer feeling like an intruder. But I really see this as a benefit. We feel like we're intruding because the relationship and intimacy feel so real that the viewer is left feeling like they are observing a real relationship. 
This all culminates in a beautiful, bleak and heart-wrenching narrative that so many people can identify with and see themselves in. It lays bare the beauty and brutality of first loves, highlighting the euphoric highs and heartbreaking lows. The real triumph of the show is how it never patronises its key demographic. It shows the depth young relationships can have, showing the difficulty and romantic complications so many of us experience in our teenage years. Normal People is a triumphant screen adaptation, laying bare the highs and lows of young love, resulting in arguably one of the best young love stories on television. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and check out my channel.